Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today what I want to do is talk about uh, four independent German watchmakers, all of which have a great deal to offer. All of them are very <laughs> horologically amazing. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is uh, Marco Lang watches. Marco Lang watches are, they're new one or not, around 2000, Marco Lang uh, started a watch company called uh, Lang and Hein. Hein was with the company for, I think, a year. And then Marco went on and uh, to build the company. And right around 19, 2019, uh something happened and the uh the company was taken over i think the people who own financial interest in it or something like that i i really don't know what happened to lang and heim but uh that's something happened and so marco lang started his own company uh called uh marco lang watches uh right now uh the only one he has is called the uh, Zeitwitz, and what it is, is it's this incredible watch. Uh, you can the you can see the back of it, uh, but what you can do with it, you can see the front, and then you can flip it over, and what you see in on the back is the movement, but also a time telling device. It's it's really incredible. Uh, three hertz. Fairly expensive uh, watch. Now, to really see the extent of Marco Lang watches, uh, you really have to take a look at the uh, Lang and Heim. Go there online. All of the movements, I think, save one, were are all Marco Lang's uh, designs. Even the one that is not purely Marco Lang. Uh, is has a Marco Lang base to it, and these movements and these watches are are really amazing. The caliber six, uh, which is in two watches, one's called the Frederick two, and the other one's called the Frederick three. I have one from this is from the time that Marco Lang was at Lang and Heim. This is called the Frederick two, but the caliber uh, six that's in it is they're all hand wound by the way has this trigonal bridge that opens up the visual the wheel train and the movement the uh, uh, balance wheel <laughs> and just it's truly really a beautiful movement one that is uh, another one i just love is called the caliber eight um the watch that it's in is a rectangular shape watch called the Georg. This watch, the the wheel train, each wheel in the wheel train has a single finger bridge that holds it in place. You flip that over and you can see the entire works. Again, this is a, a remarkable uh, movement, a beautiful watch. <laughs> I, Again, by Marco Wang. Uh, this the caliber four is a Remontois, and there's a an intermediate Remontois between the uh, the movement and the escapement, or the I should say the uh, main spring and the escapement that will rewind it so to keep a constant pressure on it. Caliber four. Unfortunately, they're not making that right now, and I th it takes a lot of skill to make that, and uh, Marco Lang's not there, so I guess they decided to put it on hold for now, but that's another one that is just a beautiful uh, movement and watch, too, to go with it. Uh, finally, uh, Caliber 7, and by the way, too, these are not all the movements or all the watches that are uh, at Lang and Heim that... Uh, there are more of them. It's, it's one of the things I think about a top-notch uh, watchmaker is that they have several different um, movements that do different things. And the kind of talent that Marco Lang has does that. By the way, too, 
he was the president of the AHCI. The AHCI uh, was founded by some of the top watchmakers. They include Philippe Dufour, uh, F.P. Jorn, and it was founded by, let me see, Sven Anderson and Vincent Calabrese. And they're mostly uh, French. <laughs> the, the two founders aren't French, but they they are now, uh, they have been for years in Switzerland. But it's very much of a Swiss organization oriented, but they've been, they've been including more and more uh, really top watchmakers from around the world now. Uh, becoming president of that organization is really something. And Marco Lang was uh, one of their presidents. Now, um, this next one, this is uh, Stefan Kadoki. Now, Stefan Kadoki is, he has a, a movement called the Caliber One. Now, this, the fact that he has one caliber, uh, anyone who has a single caliber that they did on their own is, is noteworthy. The thing about uh, Kadoki, and Kadoki notice that he's from Dresden, so is uh, Marco Lang. They both have Dresden, the major watchmaking. If you had to identify two of them in Germany, one would be Glashuda and the other one would be Dresden. Dresden is sort of the, I don't know, the upscale one. I believe Kristen Klings is also there. He's another one, but I think he's retiring, so I didn't include him. Uh, what... Uh, Stefan Kadoki did with his movement called the Caliber One. Uh, he has three different watches with it. And uh, the first one is uh, time only, uh, hours, minutes, and uh, small seconds over at nine o'clock. The second one he did, uh, he has a day night indicator up at 12 o'clock on it. And the he won the uh, Grand Prix Petite Aiguille prize uh, with his second one. Really a really a very nice thing to have. Now his latest one, I think it's still under. They're still working on it, called the Kadoki Three. Uh, is one that I absolutely love. This is where you have a multi-armed hand. I know it's sort of weird to say. Perhaps a multi-armed. Egui would make more sense. Uh, but there, as you can see, there are three different tracks. And as the, well, the way the hand works is that you have three different lengths. And the hand, as it goes around, it either is in the bottom track, the middle track, or the top track, depending on the length of the arm of the hand. Again, this is all using the, the same movement. Very, very creative. And I think in the future, this is a guy to keep an eye on uh, to come out with some, some more interesting movements and watches. Now, Maritz Grossmann is one, they have brilliant, brilliant watches. Maritz Grossmann is not a person. It is a watch uh, company. It was put together and run by uh, Christine Hutter and what she did, she got the rights to Maritz Grossmann, which is one of the, historically one of the um, uh, German, major German watchmaker, and built this big <laughs> watchmaking uh, facility in uh, Glashuda and has a number of different, very interesting um, movements. Now, the thing that I like about that, if if you look at the if you look at the movements and I this is what I did I looked at them all and I said they're all hand wound and usually your your top watchmakers just they they prefer hand wound. Uh, Daniel uh, uh, George Daniels pointed out at one time he said that they all should have uh, be wound with a key wound. <laughs> in fact, all of them in his book called Watchmaking are key wound movements. Uh, he felt that the key work sort of got in the way of the beauty of the watch. Uh, anyway, well, these are all hand-wound watches, except for one. Um, the On the lower right, one called the hematic. And the way the hematic works is there's this hammer that goes back and forth that bounces off uh, the spring on the side. And it's an automatic. So even even though there aren't any with the rotor that we're used to seeing. I, I really like the hematic because 
you can see so much more of the movement with it. Uh, this is in the lower right hand side. The other ones, uh, they use a three, I think it's called a three quarter uh, plate on top of it. And uh, the, the top two are contemporary and heritage and they have lots and lots of watches. You ought to take a look at the uh, Mertz Grossmann site. And they also have a good collection of women's watches as well. And, but you can see from the different movements that they have that this is, you know, they're more than a one trick pony by far. Uh, the cornerstone is a shape movement for a, a, a vertically, a vertical uh, rectangular watch. Uh, they, they just, I mean, they're, they're really an incredible variety. The, the, the two at the top are both uh, two and a half hertz, 18,000 BPH, which I like very much. And the ones on the bottom are both three hertz. Now, the one, <laughs> this is called the Universal Zeit. Uh, if you look closely at the dial on this, you have Phoenix, Rio de Janeiro, uh, Cape Town, Dubai, Singapore, and Tokyo, and they have all a little window with a number in it. Those numbers are the the times. Uh, the one in Phoenix is 17, 1700 hours. And so it shows all of the other ones. And on the way this is done, uh, up in the upper right there, you can see the disc that goes around that keeps all of these times coordinated. Unbelievable. The caliber is uh, 100.7. Great big uh, balance wheel in it. I mean, this, they're, Mertz Grossman's watches are, the more you look at them, I tell you, the more amazing they are. And again, these are top, in my opinion, some of the, the top German uh, companies for this. Now, the final one is Dornbluth and Sunde. Some years ago, I, I did a video on this, and I think at the time they were working with a, uh, oh, you know, six, uh, 6498 or something like that. They were coming out of, they're just right after G German reunification, which has changed so many things in German watchmaking. But they've come a long way since then. Uh, here are just a couple of watches they have. The thing about Dornbluth and Sun, their, their prices are between about five and ten thousand uh, dollars. So it's, it's a good medium. Uh, uh, layers. The ones, uh, the ones by Marco Lang and the ones by Mertz Grossman are fairly expensive. Kadokis are, are again about the same same price range, roughly as Dorm Blues and the Sun. Um, these two I have. The one on the left uh, is a has a power reserve indicator, is the main thing. But the thing about it that uh, to me is very attractive. It has a Maltese cross uh, spring setting for constant force in, in the uh, in the movement. The movement names, I, the name of the watch is the Quintus, and I think the, the name of the movement is the Quintus 2010.9. I'm not sure how they do that, but uh, there you have it. Really, I mean, it's not just a, you know, off the shelf uh, movement, but one that they've really added something I think interesting to. Now, the other one that I have here, and these are against, they have a lot of different watches. Unfortunately, they and most other watch companies have terrible web pages. They really do. Hard to find stuff. This is no different, but you can find it, and it's worth looking for, too. Um, the one on the right is uh, a moon phase, and the movement for it is called the 99.6M, or moon phase. Uh, again, another kind of thing. It's, I, this, the different color dials and so on and so forth on this. But these are really tip top, in my opinion, independent German watchmakers. Now, the ones we hear about the most are not these. They're, uh, they're something else. Uh, but these are for the independents. I always like independents. And these are, I think, four great ones uh, that the Germans have. Let me know what you think, 
And until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of Watts Collection.